Hello, everybody. Tom Nappy here, and we are joined by the Hopkinton Hillers boys varsity head soccer coach, uh, Coach Garrett Sawyer. Coach Sawyer, how are you today? Uh, pretty good. Uh, it's a little chaotic here at school, trying to keep up with all of the modifications we have to make and changes to teaching and curriculum. So, uh, but we're all hanging in there and doing our best. Uh, before, before we get into the soccer, uh, I believe you're a teacher as well. Uh, what's your teaching experience been like? Yeah, this year has been different. Um, you know, the, the restrictions kind of limit uh, the, the things that we could normally do in the classroom. We're not seeing the students as often. So it's obviously not an ideal situation, but I think all things considered, um, there are certainly some uh, benefits to uh, being in school and, and being together as uh, students and teachers. So um, it's going okay. That's terrific. How's, how's your experience been using this uh, e-learning technology? You know, we, uh, we kind of got a preview of it in the spring when we first went remote. So I think that helped everyone kind of get used to some of the technology for uh, meeting with students remotely and, and, and uh, other platforms that we've been using more frequently this year. So it's actually been a little bit smoother starting out this fall than if we had kind of started out from the beginning. Well, you've all done a great job at dealing with these crazy circumstances. Uh, but it's certainly great to see uh, some of these sports teams back on the field after a very depressing cancellation of the spring season. It's good to see soccer and field hockey back in action. Uh, so we're a couple weeks into the season. How has your uh, experience been so far this year? And I understand that uh, – the practices are, I'm sure, a little different as you have to split things up a little more. Yeah, you know, you mentioned it is exciting to be back on the field after what happened to the spring season. So I think, you know, without a tournament to play for or a league championship to play for or the usual schedule, we're trying to celebrate just participation and being together as a team and competing. Soccer certainly doesn't look the same. Practice, uh, there are limitations. But I think overall, guys are happy to be out there, to be part of a group of players, to compete, and to play a sport that they really enjoy playing. So despite some changes to the, um, the game and the way we practice uh, and the schedule, um, we're having fun. That's great. And obviously, as you mentioned, soccer looks a little different this year. Uh, no corner kicks, no throw-ins. Uh, how was it for you? transitioning to these new uh, COVID-19 rules, I guess you could call them? You know, I think that the biggest transition is with the actual games. Um, it didn't change many of the exercises that I might do or uh, activities I might do at a practice. Um, we still practice corner kicks. They just look different. You know, we still practice throw-ins. Uh, we still do a lot of the same things. So practice doesn't look that different. Right. Um, in terms of like what they do as soccer players. Um, I think what looks more different is the game. Without the corner kicks, uh, without the ability to build defensive walls, with a lot of new um, fouls being called, what we call COVID fouls uh, near the goal, and without headers, the game feels a lot different. So overall, I mean, you've played two games so far this season, um, 0-2-2 and overall. Uh, how has it been for the players transitioning to these rules? Is there anyone in particular that had a tough time? I know it's been a little bit tough for everybody, but was it an easy transition, you would say, for the players or a bit of a tough transition? I think, that I, think I would describe it as a frustrating transition. <laughs> Um, you know when we're playing the games a lot more whistles so it really disrupts the flow of the game and it's like breaking habits and right. these aren't necessarily habits you want to break either but you know even just like putting a hand on someone to maintain balance or keep them from backing into you or just little bumps that are just a natural part of the game it's leading to whistles and frustrations for coaches and players. I, I, you know, and I don't think the refs are enjoying it either. Um, so 
you know, I would describe it as a frustrating transition, not a difficult one or an easy one. It's just frustrating. Yeah, I mean, soccer's always been one of those sports you kind of play on. There's very little interruptions. Um, the only interruptions really are the very rare timeout or when the ball goes out of bounds for the most part. But now you're getting these close contact fouls and a lot more whistles than we're uh, used to seeing. Yep. Uh, uh, but is it just me or – I mean, obviously the officials had a really transition as well. Uh, but – Comparing week one to week two, it seems that uh, everyone has transitioned a, a little bit more. It seemed a lot more steady in week two and a lot less confusion. Yeah, maybe less confusion uh, because after going through it, uh, through a, a slate of weekend games, I don't think anything surprised my players as much uh, as did that first weekend. Right. And, you know, and coaches have had a chance to ask some questions of the referees and we're starting to get used to how it's going to be called and why there are calls. So I found myself in that second week of of games more often saying, yeah, they had to blow the whistle there, not why did they blow the whistle? Trying to explain it to my players. Uh, I don't think they're any less frustrated, but they're more understanding of why the whistle was blown. So I think there is this kind of getting used to it stage that we're going through and each week it gets a little bit more understandable I guess although not necessarily easier particularly you know the boys play a very physical game they head the ball a lot they use their bodies a lot and it's so hard to get away from that and I would imagine the toughest thing for you as a coach is uh, you're teaching your players your athletes uh, all along how to you know, get in there, you know, get the head on the ball, play physical, but now you have to totally kind of turn that around. And that must be tough for you as a coach. I I think to a certain extent, although in some ways it gets them to improve in areas that are a little bit different that I think are important. Like Mm -hmm. sometimes the players tend to over defend and get too physical when they're defending. And that leads to free kicks for the other team near our goal. So Every year I try to work on defensive discipline and not getting in too hard and too physically too quickly. Um, So in some ways it's improving in areas that they they can improve on uh, as they try to limit uh, what they're doing on the field. The same with possessing the ball. I think because it's a less physical game, they have to depend more on possession part of the play. So I think some areas of the game that are lost is an opportunity to work on other areas of the game that are equally as equally important. So, you know, I think that's you know, one of the message for the players is we're going to get something out of this. This isn't a waste of time. And, and just because the game looks different doesn't mean that you can't improve as a player or as a team. So um, while they're unlearning some things, they're better learning other aspects of their game. Yeah. And, and I think um, it, they're certainly going to get, a lot out of this just being out there and uh, staying experienced in competitive soccer. It may not be traditional soccer, but certainly a a lot of skill sets that they would typically use. They have to use this season. No doubt. Uh, So you got a very talented athletic group this year, in my opinion. Uh, What are your thoughts on uh, this year's team? And there seems to be some great chemistry as well. Yeah, I agree. Great chemistry, uh, a lot of talent, uh, but counterbalancing that is we're pretty young. We graduated about a dozen seniors from last year. They got a lot of playing time. Uh, The majority of our team is sophomores and juniors. So I think there's going to be a maturing process that begins this year and continues into next season. So um, that's kind of where we are as a team. Uh, trying to organize that talent in a way uh, in which we can kind of maximize our potential this year, but also going forward, finding the right spots for kids, uh, learning the system. And so just because you come in with players that are, are, you know, have a good touch on the ball or know the game well, doesn't mean you're necessarily ready to go from the beginning. So uh, there's, there's a learning process here for the younger kids in particular. And uh, this year, or uh, just last week, you celebrated your two seniors, Ross Komkowicz and Patrick Krantz. Can you talk about uh, working with or coaching them 
and uh, how much they have meant to this uh, Hillers program throughout their years on the field. They're two very talented players. Yeah, those are both guys that love to play soccer, love to compete, uh, love to push their teammates, uh, love to work hard, uh, wear the uniform with pride. Uh, and I think those are qualities that led into, of course, decisions to have them be captains. Uh, so they really are leaders in a variety of, way, a variety of ways. And uh, because of that, very valuable to our program. Um, you know, unfortunately, we're not getting a traditional season for them. But, you know, we did uh, the last couple of years, we've made tournament and, and had a pretty long season. So at least they did get that opportunity in past years. And uh, despite the lack of a, a playoff to play for this year uh, or a league championship, I think they're still enjoying it just as much. Yeah, you know, I was hoping that there would at least be some kind of championship game. Maybe you take the best team from each pod and you put them against each other. But I know they, they left some slots open at the end of the season for makeups, and maybe there's an outside possibility of adding a game or two. But I don't think even if we did, it's not going to be for any kind of – league playoff I think it's I don't think that's in the works as far as I know I'd love it if they did but um, as far as I know we're not gonna be able to do that well well uh, I just said that because I'm kind of superstitious because I mentioned what the uh, dual valley league is doing as far as fans given the lanyards and at first TVL wasn't going to have any fans and then TVL had fans after I did that interview with the uh, athletic director, Rich Cormier. So maybe this is an idea that we could just get out there and uh... and to see. <laughs> I'm sure uh, teams across the state are all asking for it because the, pl the players love playing for uh, league championships. It's, you know, they want to put a banner on the wall. It's something you remember for life. Right. So, um, I think that, you know, even if we don't have a state tournament, they, they're hoping for some kind of um, competitive atmosphere towards the end, something to play for. Absolutely. And who knows, they could always throw that in. Uh, so you had um, two tough teams so far to start off the season. You had Medway and Hollis, and, and those two teams, they've always had great rivalries uh, with you guys. Um, could you talk about your performance against those two teams? And then also, I'm very curious, what's it like play – all the games are on weekends this year. What's it like having those back-to-back -back games on uh, – you got a game on Saturday and then a game on Sunday. Uh, that, that must be uh, tough having those back-to-back -back games. Uh, how has the team reacted to that? Yeah, you know, I don't um... – you know, it is what it is. I haven't, I haven't heard much, many comments from them. I think from a coaching perspective, and even for the players as well, it's a chance to really reflect on what happened in a specific game and try to make adjustments. It's almost like a long halftime, right? Right, yeah. Um, and so in both weekends, the second game uh, had a different outcome than the first game, and I think that you know, part of that had to do with adjustments. And I was really proud of the guys the first weekend we had Medway. Um, tough team to draw for a young team, which we are on the first week of the season when we haven't had any scrimmages. So uh, it was baptism by fire against a really good team. And as you're aware, I think, what do we lose six to two in that first game and then tie them the second game. And I think you know, right. part of the reason we tie them is some adjustments we were able to make in terms of who was playing where and our approach and learning from the mistakes from the first day. So I think it kind of shows that that, the time between the first and second game is really like a long halftime and that you can make a lot of adjustments and, and uh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, it's funny you mentioned that. That's a trend I've noticed with many of the teams. Uh, you'll, you'll have a close game, a tie, and then it can turn right around, especially when the two teams have uh, similar skill levels. Yeah, definitely. And I think that, uh, you know, different outcomes in both games. Uh, you, you wouldn't guess that that would happen, but I think that, teams make some significant adjustments and it can lead to, you know, different outcomes, even just 24 hours later. Um, but I was really proud of the way that the guys reacted to, you know, losing six, two is uh, not an easy loss to take, but they went right back out there and competed a lot better the second game. And um, the adjustments worked out well. And we tied a very good Medway team that's been to state championships recently. And they still have uh, quite a few players left over from last year. So it was a really competitive situation. And then we had the opposite with Hollison tying them the first week. And we were up one nothing late 
um, gave up a kind of an unfortunate goal late in that game. And it was a, I think it was a, you know, the was a result of an indirect kick and a COVID foul, a, a player uh, ahead of the ball. It's just kind of in a reaction situation. Um, but then the second game, I think that uh, they played more direct, uh, trying to uh, feed their forwards over the tops of our, our, our defense. And we didn't react very well to that. Um, and so the adjustment that they made worked out, I think, better in their favor. And uh, some of the adjustments that we made from the first game didn't work out quite as well. So I've seen the best and the worst of having that 24-hour difference between the first and the second game. Right. And for those that don't know, we'll just throw up the results here. Uh, the boys' soccer results, as you could see, a two, six to 6-2 two loss. So Medway to start off the season, then you turn around, get a nice tie. And then uh, a great game against Holliston at home last week, one to one tie. And then uh, you unfortunately fell uh, four to nothing the next day. It looked like uh, Holliston just got things going early in that game. I was doing the girls' games at the time, but I was kind of following along on Twitter. From what I saw, I believe Holliston netted three of their goals in the first half. I think it was in the first quarter. Ah. Yeah, they were really early. Um, because I remember thinking to myself, boy, I wish I had that timeout we used to have. Uh, you, I haven't been a big fan of the timeout. I think it you know, uh, disrupts the flow of the game. It's just not traditionally part of soccer, but it is part of high school soccer in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And that was a time after they you know, scored several goals early where I, I was hoping, wish I had a timeout to bring them in and try to reorganize in, uh, in the back. Um, but by the time we had that uh, imposed break after uh, 20 minutes, it was it was almost too late. Right. But then we settled in, and for the rest of the game, it was it was even. So um, we were able to make the adjustments after we had that uh, break at the quarter of the game. But we got down too early, too soon, and it was just too big of a hole to dig out of. Yeah, and that's the thing about soccer. You get down by those three goals and – yeah, that's just tough to overcome, but uh, they held steady the uh, following three quarters and netted a goal themselves. Um, I'm sure they would like another uh, chance at Holliston, but they're, they're a program, too, that had a, has a lot of talent, went pretty far last year. Yeah, similar to Medway. Uh, you know, playoffs and a good playoff run every year. They're a good program and uh, an experienced, knowledgeable coach as well, so it's always tough competition. There's a little bit of a, a rivalry there as well with our, our neighbors. Um, so again, similar to Medway, a tough game early in the season where we didn't have much of a preseason or scrimmages. We have a fairly young team. Um, and again, it felt like baptism by fire for some of the younger kids. Um, and I did, I did mention yesterday, it would be nice if we got a couple of extra games added on at the end of the season, who would they like to play? And several of them said we'd, they'd love another shot at Holliston. So, uh, <laughs> that'd be great. I think you, you're right about that. That would be great. That's always a fun matchup. Um, speaking of that game against Holliston, the home game, uh, Owen Schneer had a nice goal in that game. He's one of the captains this year, and uh, I think his uh, dad was very happy that he got to call the action that game. Uh, could you talk about uh, Owen Schneer's performance this season? He seems like a player that's just gotten better and better every year. Yeah, he's a particular, obviously very confident on the ball in the middle of the field. Um, can take players on at 1v1 uh, quite well and quite effectively and really uh, has a knack for goal scoring and to strike the ball well from distance. Um, this year with all of the COVID fouls, it's giving us a lot of opportunities to get shot relatively open shots on goal. Um, and he scored a couple of those this year uh, off of indirect kick plays. Um, some of those goals have been 35, 40 yards out because he's uh, such a good shooter of the ball. But uh, even in a normal year, under normal rules, last year he was our highest goal scorer as well. He's a very good, very good goal scorer, very confident on the ball, likes to make plays with other teammates. Um, so um, just a, a great player to have on the team. Yeah, he has quite a leg, that's for sure. Uh, so with these younger players, have they had a – do you, would you say they, the younger players have had more of a tougher time than the older players at transitioning to the new rules, or has it been kind of the same across the board? 
they're probably the same from that perspective. I think for the younger players, the bigger adjustment is getting used to the demands of varsity soccer and the TVL. It's very, very competitive. And um, the athleticism, uh, the quality of tactics, the speed of play, uh, you start to realize that uh, even a small error can quickly lead to a goal. And so some of the teaching points that I make in practice uh, get reinforced in games uh, because, you know, the mistake in practice doesn't lead to a goal for the other team in the way that it does in a game. So the games become the teacher this fall for a lot of these younger guys. I think that's the biggest difference between the younger guys and the older guys. Uh, quite a few of the younger guys haven't played uh, at the varsity level uh, yet. So, but I don't see any difference in the adjustment to the rules. All these players have been okay. playing soccer a long time. And I think all are trying to deal with breaking habits and adjusting the way they play. Yeah. Well, it's been fun to watch this team, a lot of speed out there and some good athleticism. And I think there's a number of players that we look forward to watching over the uh, next couple of years for sure. Uh, what is the, what are the practices like at this point in the season? Is it limited to how many players you can have in the practice or how you, you got to split them up more? Uh, what, what are some of the limitations? I do split them up uh, more. Um, but I think, you know, uh, I like to do, uh, I like to make it as competitive as possible, make it as game realistic as possible. So we do a lot of uh, small sided exercises with teams going at each other. And I can just set up multiple fields or sub kids, sub different groups in and out. Um, so I think that the competitiveness of practices, the tactical and technical demands on the players haven't changed that much. And um, this season, you got Patrick Krantz for one more year uh, tending the net, and uh, he's done a great job in goal. Uh, and the only other goalkeeper I see on the roster is Max Nye. So it's looking like he might be the next guy. How is he coming along, and uh, how do you think he's going to be uh, – heading into next year you know lucky for max he gets to work with patrick this year um patrick uh one of his strengths is i think he kind of willingly takes on a teaching mode he's very um almost professional in his approach to being a goalkeeper he's been doing it a long time loves to train loves to talk about goalkeeping um i think he'd like to play it in college if he gets the opportunity and so I think he's enjoying working with Max and trying to pass on some of his knowledge of the game. Um, so I think he's, Max is kind of in an ideal situation where he's able to learn from a really experienced, uh, really good goalkeeper uh, who likes to take the time to teach. That's terrific. Yeah, he seems like uh, he would be someone that's very good for a younger guy to learn under for sure. Yep. Uh, seems to have some really good leadership skills. Uh, what has been, has your method this season changed at all as far as substitutions? Uh, obviously this season doesn't have the tournaments or anything like that. You still want to of course go out there and try to win as many games as possible, but uh, have you uh, substituted maybe more often than you would just to get kids out there with the fact that there's less games this year? Uh, I wouldn't say there's been a big change. I think that the guys still want to play to win. And I think that, you know, uh, I think some of the older and more experienced players are, are, are still getting more playing time. But in any year when I have younger kids in the team, I try to find opportunities to get them in, you know, um, maybe against a Medway or a Holliston, it's a little bit more challenging because uh, the competition is so strong. Um, but there's going to be, I think, opportunities uh, over the course of the season to get those guys the playing time they normally would. But I don't see, see, see myself having a big change in the way I substitute. I mean, the nice thing about these younger guys is there's going to be a next year and a, a year after for a bunch of them as well. Um, and I don't want to put them in situations that they're not quite ready for either. Right. Uh, so I don't, I don't think there's a lot of difference in the way I'm substituting. And, and that's just the analyst part of me asking this question. It, I'm just always curious about how coaches approach situations and if anything changes uh, with, of course, these crazy circumstances that we have this year. So 
Uh, it's interesting to hear everyone's perspective on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, through, there's been four games so far this season. Has there been any players that you could think of off the top of your head? Uh, and obviously there's a lot of talent on this team, but has there been any players that have really stood out that you look at and you say, wow, this guy really improved heading into this year? Uh, boy, in terms of, uh, you know, I haven't necessarily seen uh, improvements that I would consider surprising. Uh, you know, all the guys that were with me are a year better. Right. Uh, a lot of them play year round for town or club teams. So they're just kind of steadily improving on that kind of upward arc that comes from putting time into the sport. Um, I guess what most surprised me was the number of young kids that were kind of, I think, ready to start to transition to the varsity level. I think I have nine sophomores, which might be the biggest number I've had before. Mm-hmm. They did have a smaller senior group to begin with, so that opened up a few more slots. Uh, but in general, I, I probably wouldn't, if I, if I had to guess, would have predicted I would have had as many sophomores on the team. So that's where I kind of think there was the biggest – jump up from many of these players. Uh, But certainly guys are standing out for the quality of their play. You mentioned Patrick Krantz. If you watch a game, he stands out for his saves, his vocal leadership, his confidence on the field. Um, Tora Ito, who's a junior midfielder, he was our team MVP last year. Uh, I do think one of the reasons we struggled against Holliston was he was out with a foot injury. Uh, and so his absence was felt uh, because he does such a great job of controlling the midfield and maintaining our possession and switching the field of play. So he certainly stood out. Owen, with the number of goals that he scored, uh, has stood out as well. Um, so those are some of the guys who have stood out. Yeah, Tori Ito is fun to watch. A lot of speed uh, running around in the midfield area. Uh, so you got uh, Norton coming up. Uh, is there anything that you could tell us about your upcoming opponent, Norton? You know, uh, very well coached. Um, although, I'm, uh, you know, interesting to see how they adjusted. They normally play a very physical style. Uh, they like to score goals off of corner kicks and throw-ins. Uh, but, you know, the usual uh, corner kicks and throw-ins have been taken away. So uh, I'm not sure what to expect from uh, Norton. Because this, I think, I think the adjustments might be bigger for them tactically than maybe for some other teams. Um, because they play that physical style, look to score off of the throw-ins and the restarts near the goal. Uh, but, you know, we can always expect a, uh, a fit team, a, a well-coached team, a well-organized team, and a team that's competitive. And again, similar to Medway and um, Holliston, you know, recently perennial, um, perennially in the state tournament and often making a deep run. So it's going to be tough competition again. Well, we're looking forward to it. It should be a great matchup uh, against Norton. And I was curious, uh, do we know if uh, Ross Komkowicz and Patrick Krantz will be playing any soccer in college yet? Uh, I'm not aware that Ross is looking to play soccer in college. Um, and he said, uh, I think basketball might be his number one favorite sport. Yeah, he's, he's good at that, too. <laughs> yep. He's got, you know, and you know, one of the reasons he's effective with soccer is just generally a good athlete. And so, um, but I, I don't think uh, that he's looking to play soccer in college. But Patrick definitely, I think he'd, he'd like to play. Um, and that's kind of part of his college search. Although he did, he did say that the college choice for the academics is the primary focus for him. Uh, I think he'd like to major in business and go to a business school. So I think that the soccer piece and where he might play soccer is a little bit secondary to the school choice. But he certainly has the, I think, talent in the classroom. I've had him as a student for a couple of years as well as on the soccer field to maybe um, put those two pieces together at a good school. Well, I have a feeling whatever school he goes to, as long as they have a soccer program, he'll be there. Uh, he's a tremendous athlete. Uh, Coach, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. We wish you the uh, very best of luck against Norton, and we'll catch up with you again soon.
And I want to thank you for uh, the time and resources you guys are devoting to live streaming our games. It means a lot to the people who can't come. I know uh, my own father, who likes to come to my games, has uh, really enjoyed it and uh, commented that the quality of the HCAM live stream is the best so far. So I really appreciate your support for the program. Well, we uh, try to up the quality, especially for this season, since uh, unfortunately the fans are limited. So we're happy to get these games out there for the community to see, and we certainly enjoy doing it. Great.